Uh, we're going to look at uh, actually a couple things inside of SiteOps. One of the main things we're going to look at is roadway and some advancement we made with roadway and control of that roadway. Uh, we're going to look at uh, some workflow, and we're also going to look at um, some visualization things that we've added to help create your project and bring it to life other than just in a 2D form. Uh, so real quick, for the ones who don't know what SiteOps is, I just want to run through this real fast just to help get an understanding. Uh, what you're looking at is a typical project in the conceptual phase from the actual location of a project through to the point where we go and get approval to do plan production. So what SiteOps is going to do is it's going to help you grab information, grab some data really quick. We're going to be able to create a site plan, and I'm not talking one or two. We're going to do 10, 20, 30 site plans, and you're going to do them in just a few minutes to maybe an hour or two, depending on the type of project. And then when you have the grading plan, you're going to be able to just by the click of a button, use the parametrics and the genetic algorithms, and start looking at how does the site start grading and doing the stormwater. And what we're going to look at is it from an economical standpoint. As we all know, we can do a most beautiful design. The client looks at it and goes, wow, that's exactly what I want. But if they've only got a million dollars to spend and the budget's a million and a half, we got to make a change. And that's what SiteOps is for. How do we start looking at different components and making a change? Because we need to identify the most cost-effective way to do the project so that we can be reassured that the client gets to do the projects, we get to do plans, and we really make our money in plan production, not always in the concept phase. And again, the biggest thing is giving them upfront options. So as we go through looking at grading, the stormwater, SiteOps creates budgets in that conceptual phase to get an idea to get to a stakeholder. And I know for most of us on here, if you've been a designer, the rare case that you ever get a first design through everybody that everybody loves it. You're going to have to do revisions, and you're going to have to go back through this cycle over and over and over for many times. What SiteOps is here is to help you do that revision cycle faster and easier. So again, you can get to that shareholder approval to get to plan production. So again, that's just a real quick overview of SiteOps, uh, just for the ones who may not uh, know what SiteOps is. So let's go in and let's look at a customized workflow. So we're going to jump right into SiteOps. SiteOps is a, a delivered a little bit different. And I've just sort of opened it up just to save us some time. I don't want to spend more time about the tools. But SiteOps is a web-based type tool. You log in with a username and password. The, the file is very small. It only takes a few, about two or three seconds to download the software. It opens it up, and then you can start using SiteOps. And SiteOps is a very purpose-driven tool. It's all about doing conceptual design, whether it's parking lots, roadways, residential communities, schools, plants. It doesn't matter. It's all about not doing plan production, but helping the client and the stakeholders make a good decision before they get going too far down construction detail. But the one thing we've always wanted to add into SiteOps was the ability of people to define their own workflow to make life a little simpler. So if we look at the top, these are our, our tool tabs. I can do import, and you can see things like I can do geolocate, which I've already done, which I just tell it where in the world is this project. And then I'm going to tell it, you know, just spend a minute going out and grabbing my topography, my aerial image, uh, open street maps, GIS. You can see i got tax parcels in here, whatever I need, and to create a three-dimensional model that we're going to build from. That's a really neat part about SiteOps is you can go in and quickly create things with just really giving it information. It's here to make your life simple, uh, not make it any more uh, difficult than it already has to be. So let's close this. And you can see also across the workflow, we get things like export. We can save files, directly export, and layout tools. These are the automation of parking lots that just draw within seconds and things like that. So we want to get to that where, where we can create this custom workflow. Now, this is again, not going to be the main part of the demo. It's just a little peek into it. We've created a thing called a home tab. And inside this home tab, whether you do residential, plants, wastewater treatment, roadways, you can set up what of the tools from above you want to do. Uh, and again, I'm just showing this because this is something users have asked for. And I know if the users are asking for it, anybody looking at SiteOps is wondering how we do it, such as little things like save and save as. I want to locate the project. I want to get my topo, my imagery. What do I want to open it to? So if I want to open it straight into GeoPacker, En-ROADS, or again, one of the Bentley products, I can just pick on it. And it locates what I have on my machine and will open that, and open that software up and then push my product straight into it. Don't want to go out to Luminar T for visualization. We'll actually play with that in just a few moments. So as you can see, I line up my most favorite tools to make the workflow faster. Because uh, imagine when 
especially for the ones who haven't seen site ops. This is the kind of tool you're going to use potentially right in front of the client. So I want to make sure I got my workflow ready. So if they ask for something, I know exactly how I want to build it. So I just want to give that quick little show before we uh, get into the actual meat of what we're going to look at, which is going to be the horizontal and vertical alignments. Now site ops for years has been able to do horizontal alignment. Uh, that's from the very beginning we've been able to do roadways and how do we move them around. But a big thing we've added is vertical alignment and vertical control moreover. Remember I showed we have a 3D model of this site. So what we want to do is we want to come in and let's just for now, let's turn off a few layers just to make it easier to see. I'm going to take off that layer. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to roll the image down. I want to do a roadway from this connection point through the site, deal with the creek all the way over and tie in to the road on the opposite side. Just a little local roadway. Nothing difficult. All right, so to do this, we're going to go up and start using some of our layout tools. So again, I could go up to layout where I have a lot of different roadways and drive and things like that. But again, for today, I'm going to stay inside my home tab and I'm going to use the tools that I've created in here. And right in the middle, you can see I have draw a path, draw a sidewalk, draw a vehicle path. And again, I'll explain what some of this is and how it works with the roadway as we go along. So let's just do something simple as drawing a path. I want to pick on that, turn off my help as that starts up. I'm going to roll in. Now here's another little neat feature we have inside Site Ops. If you go in and look at it, you're going to see the image is a little blurry. That's only because I just did a quick screenshot to save some time and effort. But since I've linked this to an Esri image, if I click on it and give it just a few moments, it's going to give me a nice, clear, clean image to decide what to do. So for example, I can see we already have a turnout. So I'm going to come in about right here. We're going to tie in. And I'm going to just do nothing more than use my pan and go across the site. And let's start seeing how we want to draw this. So let's say we want to come in. We're going to do commercial on this lower side. We're going to come across. And we'll do maybe just some residential across the other side for now. So let's tie in. Let's just bring a street across this upper edge. On uh, this turn, we've got to go in sort of close so we don't go into that creek region. I want to come across this area, up, all the way across, and then let's zoom in and see how I want to tie into this roadway. So the edge of that roadway is right there. All right, so at this point, it's all about going back and starting to edit, change the model, do some different pieces. So for one thing, I'm going to come in and let's just keep this easy. I'm going to go into the roadway properties for points. And we're going to just add a simple radius to this, 350 feet. So I just made every point 350 feet. And I could go in and make something exact. I could come back to maybe just this one at the bottom. You see I'm sort of moving around just so you can see where I'm, where I'm changing it. And let's change that one to 250. So I, again, I can modify individual points or whole areas of a roadway. So let's create the roadway. We're going to do this from scratch. I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to do select path. Now what I can do is start telling the roadway how I want it to look. What I basically means I want to assign a cross section template. And you can save as a user. You can save and have as many of them as you want. You can change different pieces. Do we have walls along the roadway? Do we not? In this case, I'm just going to use a local roadway. And you can see it's got just a basic section. Nothing really wild or crazy about it. It's got a cross slope. It's got road widths already set. It's a little more of a main roadway, so I want it a little, maybe a little bigger. It has sidewalk involved in it. That's the magenta that you see on each side of the center line. So we can come in and start defining how is this road going to grade. So on the, low, on the right hand side, I've got it 1 to 7%. What material type is it? Because we want to add it to the budget. What is the thickness? So we grade, we say to grade to subgrade. All these little things that we need to start worrying about when we're doing a roadway. But the big thing is, let's just say for right now, this roadway is absolutely perfect. Other than, oh, here we go. We've got one issue. I do see this. Let's move this out of the way. There we go. We've got to get that sidewalk off of the road. So you can see I can quickly move things around. Let's turn off the Esri image. Just so it'll stop changing underneath us. But what I want to do now is I want to grade this. I want to start seeing what it looks like. So up in the upper right is the grading button. I'm going to click on this. Give it just a second to open a screen. Before we start looking at the image in the middle, look at the lower right-hand corner. You should be able to see numbers just again, just because of the online presentation. They're not as fast on my screen. They're going as I mean as fast as your eyes could blink. 
And what it's doing, it's actually looking at cut, fill, import, export, retaining walls, whatever it needs to, to give the cheapest cost of construction. Because again, that's what our clients want. I turned on the actual cut fill analysis so we can see that red is cut, blue is fill, yellow means little to no elevation change. So as you can imagine, right along that existing roadway, we're starting to look at how are we going to cut in and get into that region. And we can do things such as set up buffer areas and no grading zones and all those kind of things. But again, that's, that's a different presentation. So I want to come in, just stop this for a second. Oh, and here's a simple little thing. I love this just for the ones who haven't seen it. Site ops can also tell you when there's a tr problem. In this case, my tie-in slope is steeper or flatter. My cross slope on this roadway is 3.13%. That road is either falling too flatter than that or steeper than that. So I'm going to tell it as it comes up to an intersection, do what you need to to make that project work. So in other words, it's going to start pitching the road at that point, sort of like we have to manually do intersections. It's going to start thinking that way for me automatically. But here's one of the big things we've added to site ops recently that is going to make things a lot better. So as it was grading, it was looking at how we're we going to do the cut and the fill, the K value. But what's going to happen is being a computer, a software, it doesn't always understand what we want as a designer. So if I go under view, there's now a show profile. I'm going to resize this just so we can make it where we can see an upper and lower screen. Now, what you're looking at at this point is that's the center line of that roadway. Let's go back to this. And if you notice, it's sort of jagged. Now, again, that's site ops looking at the most cost-effective way, but that's not what we're going to want. So if we come back, there we go. Now we can see, and if I move my cursor, you can see, for example, we're going to come back and deal with this creek crossing. But what I want to do is now I want to take my best fit, and I'm going to say best fit curve. What's my minimum K value? Maybe this one, let's go 38. That's what it would be in, in my region of Charlotte. 50 is the minimum length for a tangent, and I'm going to say OK. And what's going to happen over the next 30 seconds to a minute, you're going to see the little orange line change because it's now going to start looking at the optimized roadway and start putting the best fit on there to make it look and be more like we would want as a designer. So for example, if I, I come into this one curve, you're going to see right there the curve information, my high point, my stations, PVI, my K value, my length of curb, everything that I want to. But I can always come in and edit things. For Here's a great example. I might not do this. This is still, again, looking at cost optimization. Maybe I want to move something. I want to come back in and add a point. I can come in and do that. Now, if I add this point, I need to add some properties to it. So let's give it that K value of 38. And if you notice, it already starts designing the road for me. So it's, it's a nice little thing to come in. And I want to apply this to the roadway. So if I come in and say, great, let's just close the X. Now I want to regrade it. And we're going to let site ups go in, take that addition that I've added to the roadway, making it exactly as I want it. One thing you're going to notice, because I went in and changed it, got a little more efficient as a designer, I'm not having as much, near as much fill and cut. Again, we can do all kinds of different things to start making the project look better. All right. So this is what I'm talking about where we're going to start looking at the vertical. But I want to go in, and what I want to do is I'm actually going to forward this project because I want to show you really more of the real power is how it interacts with other things other than just the ground itself. So I'm going to go in under my administrative area where you'd open a new project. I'm going to go to one where you spent maybe 30 minutes to an hour, depending on your skill set and sign-ups, creating more pieces to this project. So what you're going to see come up on your screen is we did the live work residential slash commercial in the upper area. We added in some some median, or not median, sorry about that, some striping, some tapers, lane widenings for that front area. We still come across the middle, and we went in under site ops and used their parceling tool uh, to go in and create the lots. So here's what we're going to look at. We got that same roadway. So let me just come up. Let me do a quick grade on it just so it applies everything. But what we're going to look at is we have that creek crossing. Very simple thing. Almost any roadway project, any commercial, any residential at this point, we almost always run in to this type of thing. The question is, how do we deal with it? And moreover, 
is if we deal with it, how does it affect everything else in the project? I got lots backing up to it. I got other intersections. So this is the part we want to show about the site ops new tool. So let's go back to that profile. You're going to see here's the profile we create it really nice and if you look right in these areas right here for example this little box is telling me I have a driveway attaching at that area now the driveway I'm looking at is that one right there where it comes in from the bottom so what happens is let's say I'm putting in my my roadway and they say you need to move this up all right so that's going to be the exercise we're going to run through so let's go back and I want to look at this grading plan one more time and I want you to be able to we want to go into one little area so you can see the identification of the red, yellow, and the blue so you'll be able to see the change. So if I come in, we're going to look at this region right here sort of in the middle of the screen. Let's take it. You can see we got a little bit of cut on the left-hand side. You can see we're definitely filling in. We're filling in for the lots because we've already got some creek crossing set. So let's come back in. And again, all, this is the kind of things we get all the time in design. How do we come back? and make a revision, but how does the revision affect the site? So let's go back into this area. Let's just do a simple, I don't know, i got to raise it up a couple feet. I, all I did was just pick on that. And again, I could go in and be more exact by putting exact elevations, exact locations. For now, we're just going to sort of freehand this. At this point, let's do layout to reset it, and let's grade. And let's look at the difference. We're going to let it catch up on the grading side. Let's zoom in a little bit more. And you're going to see it may be a little hard to We'll do another extreme in a minute, but we definitely are grading a lot more. You can see a lot more blue. It's actually stretching way back to the right-hand side a lot more. It's moving more dirt, which is exactly what we would expect. As I changed the low point, it changed how this road going off to the side is going to be graded. It actually changes how this road going right through the middle is going to be graded. And they will start cascading their way up through whatever the project is. No matter if it's a, a residential, commercial, it doesn't matter. It's going to cascade through the project to start looking at how we can do things. So, again, think about a roadway also. is This is something um, we hear a lot of people going, well, maybe I'm not doing a residential. I'm not doing something else. You can be A roadway can be anything that your cross-section template wants to be. You can assign it in a lot of different ways. You can make things happen, react the way you want to uh, by just going in and simply setting up a model. So this is the biggest thing we've added with the roadway. Now, the other thing you can do, I want to show this as well. Again, for the ones who haven't seen site ops, let me start the layout sovereign in the upper right. That's what makes the magic happen. If, for example, here I went ahead and tied into the existing roadway. If I want to come in and change something, SiteOps has the ability to come in and quickly change like a radius on that roadway. Let's take this image just so we can see it a little easier. You know, it doesn't matter what you want it. SiteOps can come in and change it for you. You can quickly change. Or if you got default set, I can go right back to the default, which on my roadways are 20 feet. So let's take this back to 40. But the other thing you can see inside the roadway, again, get a little more detailed. If you look, you're going to see striping. Uh, this is something that has not been in site ops before. It's not going to put all your turn arrows and things like that. There's other ways to achieve that with site ops through blocks. Uh, you'll see me play with blocks in just a few moments for some other things, but blocks can do uh, some of that that you need. But if I go over to the right where I say my properties, I can now say on this roadway, there's a red and yellow side. Maybe I don't want any striping at all. So we get rid of the striping right in the middle. And if you want to notice, there's no, there's only one yellow line now, and that's the center line of the road. That's the alignment. But if I want to come back in and bring in maybe a yellow stripe on one side and a yellow dashed on the other, and I can come in and put, and again, start making my project look realistic. And you're going to see why in just a few moments. There's not just in this view, not just taking it out to my CAD program to start doing labels and construction documents and going forward. There's a lot more things that need to be done and taken care of as you're, you're going forward through your project. Now, the other thing we added to Roadway to get more detailed is more of how can we deal with medians, uh, how can we do with other different bits and pieces. And to show this one, I'm just going to come in and do something simple just to make it easy to show one from scratch. Let's go back to Drive. I'm going to tie into the existing roadway. And let's just go up and tie into this road. And we'll just leave it something simple on the back end. 
let's just go in and grab this driveway point there we go and we'll make this zero zero and we don't have to worry about the tie-in but I want to worry about is a tie-in up front so if I want to come in and do something like add medians things like that you can do that in site ops I can go in and just simply tell it let's add a median of 10 feet and now I have a median but the thing is how do we start transitioning from the median um, out in different ways so I want to just get rid of this point I'm gonna tell this section of the roadway let's go back to no median and then I can actually come back and now start looking at transitions and tapers um, just different things of how do I want to come in and start creating the project so that it knows how to automatically transition with it and if I move that point because I need to make my stacking or my whatever it may be the transition longer shorter I can start playing around with it and start having things and they don't have to be symmetrical so I want to show that real quick that again the medians are there they've come in and they now don't just end in a point uh, they actually have now come and been more realistic so if also if I want to come and do a vehicle path I can look at how do we get vehicles to come into the intersection Again, this is the the power of being able to do things really quick and easy I just come over and say edit vehicle let's do something more than a car let's do a We'll do a small semi truck maybe a moving van so if I came in and said this is my roadway well I can stay pretty much out of the median but I gotta come in and I gotta start modifying things so on the green side let's make that roadway I don't know 24 feet and it, ooh, that's way too far right let's but if you look at the entrance it's not that far off so let's come in and do a couple of things this is the part site ops really excels at it's allowing me as a designer my knowledge base to come in and say I like something I don't like something this works that don't work but I'm doing it really quick and that's the whole key is how fast can I make a design change like that looks a lot better maybe we come back in and do the taper for a hundred feet I'm trying to get rid of this wasteful little bit of asphalt that we have over there hey, David, there we go we got a little we bit have, yes we have a, we have a question um, can you create four lane roads in site ops? Oh, most definitely. Let's show that. All right, so let's get rid of this stuff real quick. We're just going to come and we're going to clean this off. Let's get rid of the median and I'll show you how to, to do it. There's two different ways you do a, a, a four lane road. And it, again, it really depends on what are you ultimately looking at. So let's come in and let's draw a drive path. So I can come in and do this a couple different ways. If I want a, a four-lane road that's two on one side and two on the other, and I want them to be exactly the same, sort of, again, a, more of a boulevard style, we can do that, no problem. If I want it more like an interstate where I've got two separate two-lane roads, but one elevation-wise, they may vary because of the size of the median in the middle, I'm going to show you the two different ways of doing that. So if we come into the middle, I can actually just pick on my roadway. Again, it can be all the roadway. It can just be part of it. I want to come in and tell it I have two lanes. You can see the two lanes. And then what I need to do is say that how wide are the lanes? In this case, together, they're 24 feet. These are 12-foot lanes. And you can see the dashing goes in there automatically to let me know that I have a center line and I have multiple lanes. Same as if I came back and added a median. It's going to understand that I now have a median and I push those lanes out. So it can take care of that for you. Now, that's one way. Let's come back and do another one. Zoom out just a little bit. That's one of the ways of doing it. And the other way is actually um, a little more for, for a larger roadway. And we do see users doing this. Is if I want to come in, let's say I just want to offset this road. Let's set this at maybe 500. I want to come back and I want to tell site ops, take that line, offset it. And I can give it an exact distance. I could just sort of pull it over. Maybe we'll go 50 feet. And in this point, I want you to turn this line in the upper right. Let's make this a car drive. And at this point, I would come in and let's say I want to make these, get rid of these medians, for example, now, because this would be more of a, a higher road type scenario. I can come in and bring these in. As you can see, now I've got two roadways. They can, they're going to have their own separate parameters. I can set them through the road profiler completely different from each other. They are not the same by any means. So if we come in and grade these in just a second, let's just grade them, and we'll show you what it looks like. So let's grade. Now 
and we'll see, here's our two little roadways as you can see right in the front edge they're grading and if I go back to my road profiler at this point I can just pick on it go back to view profile and I can run a best fit let's just say the same thing we'll do say 30 say apply let it go really quick and maybe that lane will let it just be just fine the other one will make a great difference so I can now come in and see that that is one way doing a roadway let's click the other one show profile let's do a best fit again now again I could let's just do this I could come in and say let's start creating my own I don't even want site ops to find something different for me I, I want to do this I want to come back and say all right each point I need a K value of let's do 30 and actually if you'll notice it went red it tells me I can't have 30 the most I can have based on that design is 20 so for what we're doing today I'll just pull these back to 20 and, and David, when I apply a, that yes sorry, we have another question uh, roundabouts can you show a roundabout please yes we get done with this we'll definitely show a roundabout that's been a, a something that we do inside site ops so as you can see now if I come in and look at my grading just to show this real quick we have a fill where I went up and over and then we have a normal cut where I sort of let it try to transition with the grade so you can do that um, let's go in and let's drop a roundabout somewhere in the middle of this project let's come in and I don't know let's go over and maybe we're gonna put a roundabout for another type of area that leads off to the other property now for site ops a roundabout is really just a collection of a couple things but it's a really neat thing we can do so let's go in I'm just gonna start with a basic circle let's give it a radius I don't know of maybe 80 feet now on this circle I'm gonna to go to the right hand side and I'm gonna tell it that it is a street and as soon as I tell it's a street we can sit there and have slopes maybe only three percent in that area what material type is it and so on and so forth then I want to offset this let's just offset it I don't know we'll just say just for now 20 and I'm gonna take this and we're gonna call it an area and I'm just gonna leave it undefined or I could even go in and say it's a median users can do that either way uh, there's a couple different ways to achieve things but what I want to do is pick on both areas hold my control key right click and say group and what this means is those two items move together they act the same as if they're one and I could even save them as a template over on the right called a spatial template and use them later so now when I go back to a roadway we'll just come off this roadway and we'll just tie into this one if you notice whenever I hit the layout button go up here it acts exactly the way I want it and then I can come in and start saying all right mr. point let's go in and maybe put some bigger radiuses and come in and do some radius now the one thing site ops won't do and this is where you can come in and get more creative and and do your own type of design if I want a little directional median right there I want a chain path I want to offset it let's just bring it over 12 and in this case I'm going to chain again and I'm going to close chain path and I'm going to tell that little area I just created there convert area in this case I'll do a median again set the top to maybe two percent let's make this one instead of grass let's make it we'll make it I don't know like concrete do a layout do grading and the beauty is wherever I move that cul-de-sac around so we'll follow the roadway it'll stay attached so that quick I can come in and start making a roundabout and again that's sort of the beauty of site ops if I come in and start doing things again it's more site ops is more about your experience and less about the ability to draw so if I want to come in and let's just say move this you're gonna see that the road will go along with it reattach that get rid of this, some of that cleanup work and I can change and, and modify and do things however I want to to make this design work but what site ops doesn't know is where should that roundabout be why should I put it how big it should be those are the parts that we as designers are here to tell it you know little things it'll it will do for you here's just a little example we don't cross a main roadway or a roadway with sidewalk we might do a crossing but the sidewalk knows to go away and in this case since I don't have any sidewalk it don't know to add any but if I did tell it it had sidewalk it would automatically add the sidewalk to it so again it allows me to go in and quickly make those options quickly make those changes to show something all right so let's go into one of the other things I want to show as we go forward again that was so a really quick hit on the vertical and the vertical alignment 
But another big thing is, and users have seen us talking about SiteOps for a while. And we've created a model that you can go out to SiteOps or go from SiteOps to LuminRT and be able to create visualization. But we've made it simpler. Uh, a lot of the users uh, go, I don't want to just export my model. I want to take my model and go to the next level. But I want to do it inside of SiteOps. So under blocks, we have added in what are called LuminRT proxies. It's not every LuminRT model. It's a lot of them. It's cars and trees and plants and different things. But we also added intelligence inside of SiteOps. So if I come back and I want to draw a path, what I'm going to do is start identifying where I want some of these models and how much of them do I want to apply to an area. So for just right now, we're going to just come in and create some cars inside of this actual parking lot. So let's go to block. Let's pick a car that we want. Let's say I just want a BMW. Got a nice parking lot. And what you would do is if I wanted five different cars, you would create five different little areas that would relate to different cars. So what I'm going to pick is on that an edge of that outer line I just drew. Go to properties, say it's a block boundary, and then tell it, is it for islands, where to put trees, for example, in your parking island? Or is it, in this case, it's a parking, and what density do I want for this car? And how many of them are backwards versus forwards? And then at this point, all I got to do is sign a block and basically just pick on that car. And I do this. Now, the importance of this part, this is where it's going to make life simple. Because we know the odds are if I'm doing this for the client, right, this is not going to be option number one. They're going to look at it, and they're going to change, and they're going to do different things. So we want to come in and be able to have it where as I revise that parking lot, so does the car location, the trees, add a path down the side of the road until it it's every 100 feet is a tree. Again, all kind of different things I can change, and they'll automatically react and respond to my design so that I can come in and get what I want. Now, what happens is I want to be able to show this in LuminRT. Again, for the ones who haven't seen it, this is a simple little button we have. We call it LuminRT. I click on it, and just to save time, I've already sort of done this one. But literally, when you click on it, it basically says, do you want to bring, what data do you want to bring over? And in just a few minutes, it goes from looking like this to something that looks like this. So this is the exact same project. We just have to take some time. I put some trees in. I can go in and actually have the tree. At this point, I can put moving vehicles. I can put moving people. I can add more to my model. But imagine if I changed the parking lot and I did all this work in LuminRT, I'd have to go back and redo it. Now, with inside SiteOps, I change SiteOps, and all I got to do is go back and do the little bits and pieces that I did. Have SiteOps put a house on these residential lots. You can see the lane striping as they go through in the sidewalk. So when we talk about creating an enlivened environment and the clients understanding what it is that we're doing, this is how we do it. But a lot of time it's been about speed. It's been about effort. And with SiteOps and LuminRT, it's about more spending time on, you know, on our skill set as a designer and less on plan production because this is what sells a project. The 2D drawing is great and it gets us to a point of construction. But a lot of times when you're sitting in front of a city council trying to figure out what is this going to look like, this wins a project. Um, it's hard for some of the other ones to do that. We're going to jump in and answer some questions for you. Let's see here. Any layout for diverging diamonds? Um, I'm assuming diverging diamonds being things uh, such as some of the new interchange, if that's what I'm thinking about, some of the new interchanges that are out there. Again, you can do them and then manually go through and change a few things. Um, do I have any examples of tools for rail? Um, rail, we really don't have a, what I call a direct tool set. What we, people have done to do rail, we've had users do spur lines, things like that. What they've done is they actually take the cross-section template, similar to the way I showed doing a roadway, and they create one for a rail. Uh, again, a cross-section template for site ops doesn't matter if it's a rail, a ditch, a uh, roadway is however you set it up, and it will go in and help you uh, design uh, at least a conceptual rail. Again, a lot of rail is almost where do you put it based on demographics and things like that. Uh, that it does not do. So I would say for now, it, again, it's just very conceptual there. All right, so what what are my export options with other programs? That's a great one. Uh, SiteOps is CAD agnostic. It's been that way uh, since almost the very beginning. We can go out to any Bentley project. 
uh, that uses a DGN type format like MicroStation, GeoPack, En-ROADS. Uh, we do work with Autodesk products. We do work with SketchUp, Luminar T, so a number of different things that we go and uh, deal with. How do you change lot layouts to align with the roadway? Um, if we're talking about, I'm just going with the residential piece, just uh, uh, assuming that's what you're talking about. Um, that will happen automatically, but we have a parceling tool in there that allows, as you're changing the roadway, the lots will change with it. Um, and you can do a parcel divider, which then allows you to take individual lots and change those low parcels and configurations based upon that. Um, I hope that answers that question. All right. The SiteOps software, this is, a again, where a, a good part of being webbed and being different is give you an example as we push some bug fixes um, just literally this past weekend. Uh, since now, uh, but users, again, we push them just because we find them and you don't need to know about them. So therefore, we do update the software about every quarter. It can be more. But one thing we do is really great with support is we love to hear from the users. Um, being that we're web-based, we can fix issues really quick, make life easy for you by being able to be more interactive. Um, basically, this next question is about how do we basically get up and get started with site ops, uh, training videos, things like that. We're in the process of putting this inside the fulfillment center, um, but if you need anything like that prior to, do support at siteops.com. Uh, we can definitely get you that, um, or david.settlemeyer at bentley.com. We have some of that already made up, and if you need it so that you can get started, we can take care of getting that for you. But it should be up in the next month or so inside of the Fulfillment Center and the uh, learning, uh, learning, Bentley Learning. Okay. SiteOps, the, the SiteOps allow for a camera path to be created when you're creating your uh, presentation videos. Uh, SiteOps does not. That is something you would do inside Luminar T when you get it in there. Uh, so inside, you would export from SiteOps, go in, set a path, and that way, you, again, you do all the video production and creation in inside. All right. So I do want to appreciate everybody sticking around today. I know we had some technical difficulties. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so I'm going to hand it back over to Natalie, and everyone have a great day and a, a great week.